Hello there, Grimoth here with Planet Stronghold, a science fiction role-playing game released by Winter Wolves in March 2011. It uses the Rinpy engine, meaning that this game is also a visual novel. If that's not your thing, well, good talking to you. Longtime viewers of mine may recall my live broadcast of Planet Stronghold over two and a half years ago, one of the few streams I've never transferred to YouTube. It's gone now. Lost in the ether where only the Google overlords can access it. My first take, you know, view of the, like, opening scenes, went through all the tutorial stuff into Chapter 2, stream chat interacting, it's all gone. But that's alright, because I didn't get very far in this game. Uh, I might rectify it in this series. We'll be fine. By the way, is some background. Winter Wolves is an independent game developer and publisher run by one man, and I apologize in advance for the name butchery, Celso Riva. The first game of his I played is The Goalkeeper, and he finished that back in September 2004. It's been a while. He's done a few things since then, enough to be successful all this time. I'll provide information links in the video description, and if you're terrified of using his DRM-free website, you can find most of his games on Steam. There's a 50% off holiday sale. Convenience! Now, in some technical esoterica, the game defaults to a 1024 by 768 resolution. I've stretched it to a true 16x9 for the YouTube player, but there are consequences. Try not to slit your wrists if you see black bars. Okay? Okay. New game. Chapter 1, The Arrival. Consider this and probably the next video as well, as tutorial videos. Um, I've got a handle on the basic mechanics of the game. It helps that I went through the tutorial this morning. Uh, in a rare instance from me, I actually recorded that and then uploaded it and then I woke up and decided, complete rubbish, deleting it, restarting from scratch. Uh, I spent way too much time trying to think of voices for all the characters. That hurt my throat, and really wasn't entertaining. So, main character here, Joshua Nelson or Lisa Nelson. This choice will only influence the romance options inside the game. Both characters can be any class and have no particular gender-specific limitations. I'm gonna be Joshua. Joshua is incredibly happy that he has been selected as the main character for this playthrough. Please select your game difficulty. Difficulty will affect enemy strength, how many skill points you get on each level up, and other aspects of the game. If you've played RPGs before, we recommend leaving the difficulty set to medium. I will go ahead and follow the game's advice and leave the difficulty set to medium. It can be adjusted, as the game will tell us. This is the default difficulty level. You should be able to win most battles by trying different combinations of weapons or heroes. However, the boss battles can be tough. Remember that if you find the game too easy or too hard as you play, you can change the difficulty any time from the preferences screen. And you know, if I ever do future playthroughs of this game, uh, those difficulty options are open to me. How to play. You can use the page up and page down keys. This is basically if you've never played a Rinpy game before. Uh, thankfully, I have. I've just finished my training at the Military Academy and I'm already on my first assignment. I've been assigned a Planet Stronghold. Hopefully I'll be stationed there a while. It's called Planet Stronghold because it's the most well-defended human planet in the whole galaxy. Yet, recent widespread rumors say that there are some troubles on the planet itself. I don't know why I was assigned here. Normally, only the best soldiers make it to this base. Not that I'm complaining about it, of course. You! Are you Private Nelson? Joshua Nelson? Yes, I am. Why is a high-ranking officer like you here to greet me? I am the one asking the questions here, Private. I'm Lieutenant Schatz. Regarding your question, I wanted to see you in person. It could be Schatz. Schatz? Schatz? I'm gonna go with Schatz. It sounds more... Debonair? Is that the word I'm looking for? It sounds more sophisticated, and... Uh, Schatz just sounds a bit too, uh, juvenile for me. Regarding your question, I wanted to see you in person. At the Academy, they say you're one of the best students they've ever had. It piqued my interest. Tom Schatz, Lieutenant of Planet Stronghold Army. Listen, I've been busy and I haven't had time to read your full profile on my PDA. Would you be so kind as to provide me with some info? We walk into the hangar zone leading to the inner city. Of course, sir. What would you like to know? 
First of all, in which field did you specialize? You can now select your character class. Josh was incredibly happy about this. On the following screens, you will be able to review your choice and confirm it. Choose wisely. You won't be able to change it later in the game. Soldier, Guardian, Scout, and Psionic. Soldier is the most physical badass. Uh, Guardians uh, specialize in uh, long-range air-to-ground combat. No, not StarCraft. Uh, but I think it's more along the lines of uh, protecting others. Scout uh, can do sniper work and some other non-combat skills, and psionics uh, have great strength in all of the psionic fields, and things like charisma. Uh, I'm going to be psionic. I'm a man who likes to uh, crush things with his mind, but I'll go ahead and allow you folks to read all of the class descriptions. Soldier. Ah, yes, of course. The most common specialization. This specialization is very useful in an array of situations. Soldiers are well trained in combat and know some useful skills, but are the worst class at using psionics. We're going to be seeing these other classes in the game anyway, so it helps for you folks to get a grasp of them. As well as me. Not I do not want to be a soldier, no. Never remember. Guardian. That is a good choice you've made. Guardians are powerful offensive units. I am a guardian as well. Guardians are special offensive units that prefer to fight using heavy and energy weapons, know how to use explosives, and can wear powerful armors. So, they're not really so much as protecting other people so much as they're like brutes. You know, tank type folks. Although they get fewer hit points than soldiers, so what do I know, right? Anyway, that's them. I do not wish to be a guardian. Pull down my skip key, let's go to scout. Ah, so you know how to survive on your own. We have some excellent scouts here. Scouts prefer to fight using accurate shots rather than brute force. They are well trained in sniper weapons and know how to sneak and survive in a harsh environment. They received a basic training in defensive psionic skills. Uh, the soldier is the only class of the four who's really gimped in psionics. All of the others to some degree know how to use psionic skills, with the psionics class being the one with the most aptitude and potential in psionics. Anyway, no, I'm, I'm alright, but thank you. Uh, and finally, psionic. Then you must have nano implants so you can skillfully use the power of your mind. Great. We need more of your type around here. Psionics are specialized in fighting with their mental powers. They can use their powers both for offense or defense, but are the worst class in using traditional weapons. So our primary skills are medicine, psionic training, heal and harm. Our secondary skills are charisma, science, and survival. I will go ahead and be a psionic. During the game, you can access several screens by clicking on the icon to the right of the dialogue window by pressing special keys. This allows us to review our current party members, including their inventory and skills. You can also access it by using the I key. The current party is formed by just you and Tom, but later in the game you can have up to four party members. This opens up the quest screen. It is currently empty because you haven't discovered any. And the bottom icon accesses the load and save menu. Bonus weapons added! Thank you for buying the deluxe version! You can find the, find the new weapons in Joshua's inventory. You will also be able to assemble 100 new weapons and armors using the metal scraps that you'll loot from the enemies as currency. Just visit Lucille to assemble the new items. Right. So, here's our inventory and skill screen. Josh was a level 1 psionic. He starts with the basic equipment, advanced psionic amplifier, the Empire combat suit, and first aid kit there. Uh, courtesy of me owning the bonus deluxe epic cool ultra version, I also get some starting weaponry. Uh, this is a replacement psionic amplifier, which is stronger as a train approaches, because what would a Let's Get On With It adventure be without a train outside? So yes, this one deals 8 to 10 damage. We'll explain the statistics more later. Suffice to say, however, that the Psionic Omega is better. The train agrees. Also, this is Tom. I'm not going to be changing his equipment, because... To hell with Tom. He doesn't get any of my things. He didn't buy the deluxe version. That's right, you tell him, Train. He needs to buy the deluxe version. <laughs> uh, so inventory-wise, this will be explained by the game later, the various icons and what they mean. Uh, Skills-wise, we have a bevy of skills. The ones that are emboldened in gold are my class skills, and uh, they are easier to increase than my non-class uh, skills. 
Psionics is my only combat skill. I've got a smattering of non-combat skills, and then all of the Psionics are my class skills. So I have a lot of flexibility in working what I want to do. Tom, as a Guardian, has heavy weapons and energy weapons and armor. He's got a lot of explosives on his side. He's got some disrupt potential. Lock picking repair, harm. So, you want to try to use characters uh, according to their aptitude. Makes sense, right? Um, nah. We won't mouse over all those skills and allow you folks to read them. They'll be fine. I'm eager to start my training, sir. Good. I like your enthusiasm. Hold on. Look there. Those robo ants. They're attacking. Robo ants? Those don't sound too friendly. Anyway, looks like my training will start sooner than I expected. You're about to see the new enemy screen. It appears only before battles with enemy types you have never encountered before. You can access the enemy info again through the Holo Encyclopedia at the Scientific Lab later. This is the Robo Ant 2. Uh, basic enemy type. Uh, does have some armor rating versus psionics, and that's what my character uses. Turns out that robots not so affected by mental powers. How about that? No, uh, no extra reduction versus energy weapons, though. And this robo and this enemy special move repairs others. So you'll want to take out this support unit first, unless you're sure that you can get a kill on another target. Welcome to Planet Stronghold Combat. You can now play a short tutorial to help you understand how battles work. You can skip if you want, but we recommend you to play it. Sure. We'll go for it. At the top of the screen, you can see the enemy's info. For each enemy, you see the name, the hit points, the skill points, the armor values, and attack weapon. You also see a graphic representation of the enemies in the center of the screen. At the bottom of the screen, you see your party. For each member, you see a portrait that, once clicked, brings you to the status inventory screen and the current effects below it. Tired, stunned, confused, and knocked out. On the right, from top to bottom, the name, the current hit points, psionic points, and small icons representing the equipped weapon slash armor slash item. The currently active player has an orange border and you can see the action menu sliding up. You have six options available. The first three are set to the different attack modes. First shoots more times with less accuracy and no chance of critical hits. Normal is the default attack mode and aim shoots fewer times with more accuracy and chance of critical hits. It also gives you an evasion penalty. Defend, you take cover, um, and regain some HP and PP, as well as getting a defensive bonus. Item allows you to use the currently equipped item, and Psionic opens the Psionic Powers menu. If you're a soldier, your Sonic skills are very limited. In the game, there are several kinds of weapons with different statistics. Min, max damage, accuracy, rate of fire, and damage type. And you've got several different damage types. Energy, Explosive, Armor Piercing, Acid, and Psionic. My character, for example, deals Psionic damage. Tom here, with his weapon, deals Explosive damage. Uh, as opposed to having an energy weapon, you can see that uh, these Robo Ants have two uh, resist armor resistance versus Explosive, and four armor versus Psionic. Each damage type is more effective on certain types of enemies. In this first battle, for example, the Robo Ant 2 is easily damaged by energy weapons, and they'll absorb uh, some damage from all the other kinds of attacks. The rate of fire determines how many times you shoot with that weapon during your turn. Uh, for example, Josh shoots twice per turn with his weapon, as uh, Tom shoots three times per turn with his weapon. It's good to know. I do believe these enemies only attack once per turn. Lastly, remember that at the beginning of each turn, the enemy will regain some skill points using their special attacks, while your characters will regain some psionic power points. For your party members, that value is influenced by their skills. Later in the game, you can find some types of enemies that also regenerate hit points. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our ba basic battle started. We have a lot of psionic potential here that we can use to do all sorts of crazy things, but that won't be necessary. Let's just go ahead and burst down that robo ant. No chance of critically hitting, but it gives me an extra attack, and I won't need critical hits to finish off these robo ants. Burst here for Tom as well. There's an aggro bar, which shows how likely an enemy is to attack that character. 
Now, according to the game's mechanics, at least what the game tells me of the game's mechanics, the game's intelligent and recognizes uh, when it's ineffective to attack a person and they'll choose other targets. I think the game itself reveals this uh, through the tutorial stuff. We'll see that later. Anyway, let's have Tom finish off this character. Enemy. Oh, that takes care of that. That takes care of that. Good work, Tom. Tom has a lot of hit points because he is a level 4 character. Josh is only level 1. I think the level cap in this game is 25, but that cap is only so high because of possible expansions that won't be coming out for this game. Uh, Winter Wolves is currently at work on Planet Stronghold 2. I don't have an ETN when that was released. Alright, good work, Tom. I was concerned there that thing would survive. So yeah, I think, realistically, if I do every side quest, it's like level 15 or level 16. We'll see. Alright. We, we got three metal scraps. You fought well, Nelson. Well, I wasn't the best recruit in the whole academy for nothing. <laughs> I mean... Why not, right? Gotta show some confidence, man. These two people smiling at each other. This guy looks like the kind of sleaze who would say something like that. Just overconfident prick. That smile right there. Tom would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it seems they didn't teach you much about modesty at the Academy. In any case, he seems to be overly confident in his worth to me. Oh, uh, pleased to meet you, Miss... Rebecca Fox, Sergeant of Planet Stronghold Army. My name's Rebecca Fox, Sergeant Fox, the best scout in this entire colony. Sergeant Fox is a big talker, but honestly, she is a good sniper. Damn right I am. Wow, she's incredibly sexy. I suppose I could put up with her even with that attitude of hers. It is a pleasure meeting you, Sergeant Fox. My name's Joshua Nelson. Nelson, that sounds familiar. It does? May I ask one thing, Sergeant Fox? What is it? You said my name sounded familiar? Um, oh, yes. My father used to tell me stories about a general named Nelson. If I remember well, his name was John Nelson, and he was a hero on this planet. Oh, really? Yes, it was thanks to him that we managed to settle here. He was key in repelling the alien invasion in the founding years. We can't be sure about that. What do you mean, sir? That war was ferocious and many data archives were completely destroyed. We have no hard evidence, so they must remain legends, unfortunately. But still, I've heard of that Nelson as well. Well, I'm honored to carry such a famous name. As you should be. I expect great things from you now, you know. I pull up your personal file on my PDA, Nelson. It says that you lost both your parents when you were a child. Yes, sir. I was only five years old. I don't remember much about them. I only know I only know they were both assassinated on my home colony on Mars. I was raised in an orphanage and then decided to join the military. Curious, your father worked several he years here as a scientist. It seems he was working on a cure for some new diseases discovered on this planet. And your father's father was born here as well. Silence fills the room. Are we all thinking about the same thing? The coincidence is baffling. Could I be somehow linked to that famous Nelson, his nephew? Or is it something else? New quest added. My origin. What were those robots? Why do they attack us? Those robo-ants are used for training here at the base. I don't know why they attacked us. It has never happened before. Completely not a coincidence. Ellipsis. The two glance at one another with a serious expression. I think they may, may, they, blah, 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 blah. they may be hiding something from me. But I just arrived and I can't insist too much, so I don't pursue it further. New quest added a strange welcome. So, what will I be doing here? You'll be training for combat and continuing studies in your specialization. There are plenty of extremely skilled instructors stationed here, myself included, obviously. 
That fight was nothing compared to what you will encounter in the future. All your enemies were the same kind. The real fight begins when you're facing different kinds of enemies, and the challenge starts when you're having to dodge combined special attacks. I see. It sounds exciting. I'm eager to start my training here. Let's move now. I need to show you the training facility. I'll show him everything, if that's alright with you, Tom. Oh, sorry, I mean, Lieutenant Schatz. Schatz. Yes, sure, you can show him. Sorry to disappoint you, but you've already done more than enough for him. It would be inappropriate for a high-ranking officer to stay any longer. Alright. I better get be going now before someone comes looking for me, Nelson. Remember, looking for me. Nelson, follow Sergeant Fox and stay out of trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I follow Fox to the main building of the military base. I see her press a button to open the entrance and we walk through a series of corridors. One after another, they don't seem to end. This place is a giant maze. Don't worry, it seems confusing at first, but once you get familiar with the inner transport system, there's nothing to it. Yes, ma'am. We journey further inside and stop at one of the rooms. This is your room you'll share with another private. He's only been here a few months now. She turns to look inside the room, then steps back with a look of shock and disgust on her face. Philip Kerning, wake up immediately! There's no umlauts, but I'm adding them. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I hope you'll learn from Private Joshua Nelson Nelson's example. He is always vigilant. Good old Philly. I peer into the room from behind Sergeant Fox. I see why she was oh so angry. This Phil guy was taking a nap. Now go get changed. Your training's about to start. Get on top of things, Private. Fox stomps out of the room and slams the door. <laughs> I'm not even gonna finish that sentence, Joshua. <laughs> Whatever. A hothead, that Rebecca. I can't stand anything about that woman save for that body of hers. In any case, pleased to meet you, Phil. Yeah, call me Phil. Alright, pleased to meet you, Phil. Because that's what Grimace going to call you. Yes, he is. Pleasure is all yours, Joshua. And Grimace, you fucking dick. Damn, am I really going to have to share a room with this guy? He's not the friendly type, to say the least. I'm going to go change. Don't touch anything. I got this room memorized, newbie. Don't worry. Asshole. This definitely isn't going to work out. Now you have the chance to play the training chapter of the game. If you've already played it before, you can skip it completely. However, it is your first time playing the game, we suggest you complete the training chapter since it contains some important explanations. Well, sure. We're going to play the training chapter, because why wouldn't we? Well, I'm at it. I suppose I'll save the game. Don't look at these save spoilers, everyone. Oh, hey. What do you know? It just turned midnight. So it's been like... What? 18 hours since the last time I played this game. Trust me, my sleeping schedule's all completely crazy because of my vacation for Christmas. So, I'm, I'm really well rested, I swear. <laughs> I insist. Uh, at any rate, we'll go ahead and end the video here. Um, well, before we end the video, we'll go ahead and click play training and show you all this quest screen. We have two possible quests to complete. A strange welcome and my origins. They're both active. I haven't failed any quests or completed them yet. I'll also take you back to this screen where we can take a look at metal scraps. We can visit Lucille to use them to assemble new weapons and armors. Oh boy! And skills. I suppose I will end this video now by mousing over all these skills and if you so care you can pause the video and read them on your own time. I don't feel like reading them. I'm done speaking for this video. Take care.
I rescind my statement about being done talking because this sounds very much like the fallout description for speech. Besides, it was incredibly awkward. There's no, there's not even any music. Anyway, there's science. Sneak. Repair. Medicine. Lockpick. Explosives. Survival. And then the psionic skills. Heal. Harm. You'll notice that's not a guaranteed hit chance either. Protect. Disrupt. Cure. Fatigue. Shock. And restore. Now, it is regrettable that, uh, all of these attack skills are single target and have a chance of failing. It, uh, you know, might like to look for those multi-target effects, and Joshua, well, really, no one has those. At least not that I'm aware of, but I've only done the training, so what the hell do I know, right? No, but seriously now, we're done. I, I guess we can look at Phil. Maybe we're not seriously done yet. That's his rifle. It deals energy damage. Uh, I think with that in mind, I'm actually going to give him this poison sniper rifle. You'll notice that it only has a rate of fire of 1 as opposed to a rate of fire of 2, but it deals acid damage instead of energy. It also has a higher crit chance. And uh, due to the different in uh, damage type, I'm actually going to want Phil to use it here. Go ahead and equip that, and I will hold your old gun, I guess, just in case I change my mind. Besides, it's green. Yeah, it's green. He's a level one scout. Which, uh, you know, it's not my character, so it's useful. He's got sniper weapon skill with accuracy. He's got a lot of sneak potential, along with survival. Some evasion and light weapons, uh, just in case you want to give him, like, a pistol or rifle instead. And he's got, uh, his primary psionic focus is Protect, which, uh, helps to increase armor value. Which isn't even a guaranteed success rate either with the psionic skill. And then Heal, you know, just in case you need someone to help you heal. How about that? Okay. Finally, we have a very funny looking hat there. What could it mean? Find out next time.